Welcome back to Gardening with Ryan. We've planted an orchid in with the ice plant, and there, grass is growing in really well. And in this one, I just wanted to ramble a bit about ideas that have been on my head related to theoretical physics and the production of energy. Now, I would like to start off by saying that I am not a scientist. I have only had official education in science as far as high school, and these are all just thoughts for fun. Thought number one well, I'm just going to go over it systematically. Basically, I'm thinking about more efficient ways to generate energy. Original, right? Well, the third, the second and third law of thermodynamics, I believe they are, say that a perpetual motion device is impossible. For those who aren't familiar, and for myself, and any um, physicist or whatever who knows better is, feels to correct me, feel, is free to correct me in the comments, but as far as I understand it, a perpetual motion device, or building a machine that by itself will continue to move forever is impossible. And. As far as I understand, generating electricity requires just making something to move, whether it be air spinning a, win a wind turbine and um, water spinning a water turbine or, um, you know, burning of something, some sort of resource to create pressure. Um, and in science class, I think we might have all done the experiment where we had both a magnet and a metal of some sort, and by moving them next to each other, you generated electricity, and everyone in the class was supposed to be like, whoa, we've just solved power, power's this easy, and, and then the teacher goes in and explains uh, how energy cannot be generated. You can only take out as much energy as you put in, right? Like, you can only, you cannot create energy. There's no such thing as free energy. So, we have arrived at a place in our human existence where we have tried to harness clean sources of energy. One example is, see how that's blowing? The wind. If you have the wind spin a turbine, okay, here, this might be a helpful analogy. A lot of flashlights have a crank on them to make them powered if you want, if, 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 you, if you run out of battery. And you can buy phone chargers that are operated on a hand crank, or think of a bike that someone would ride to power a house. Uh, generating electricity happens that way fundamentally all the time, as far as I know. And, um... If you could theoretically build something that would spin forever on its own, you would have unlimited energy. Here's where I have something of an idea that might be profound or might be really dumb and there might be some scientist ready to explain why it's really dumb. But I'm just putting it out there just in case it's not dumb. So, I was thinking, perpetual motion device. Perpetual motion device. How could you... And here was iteration one of my idea, which I actually scrapped now, but I think it's worth mentioning. Imagine a revolving door. And on two of the doors... 
there was an extremely powerful magnet. And this magnet caused the door in each rotation when it got close enough to the magnet to be pulled upon hard enough to start another rotation. And I was like, or, or imagine if you, uh, on a wind turbine, stuck a giant magnet to it and just, like, made it spin by having a really strong magnet on Earth that it was attracted to and um, went at. But those of you who are physics dweebs know why this kind of falls apart. So, I started to mull on... Hmm... Basically, I'm trying to violate the laws of physics and create a perpetual motion device, and I know that's not going to happen, but a lot of innovations have come from, even if we cannot do this thing, the impossible hypothetical is how you get close to the thing. So, what immediately came into my mind as the closest thing to a perpetual motion device that I have personally witnessed. Now, I don't know if there's if there's more to this, or if there's something more efficient. Please let me know if there is. But a pendulum. And I thought it was the rotation of the Earth, but apparently it's gravity uh, that causes a pendulum to stay in perpetual motion. Not literally perpetual, but as far as I understand it, once you get a pendulum going, just because of the nature of the gravity of the Earth, I thought it was the way the Earth spun until my friend was like, no, it's the gravity. Like I said, not a scientist. But it is essentially presented to us like a perpetual motion device, that the actual potential energy that becomes kinetic energy in the continued swinging of the pendulum is actually the an, an energy being exerted by an intrinsic property of the earth rather than something that we are putting into it. I know we have to give it that initial swing, and I know pendulums do eventually stop, but I wanted to look into why does a pendulum stop? what causes it to stop. And the reasons I could find were the fact of air friction, friction at the pivot, and the fact that all of the molecules are going to be acting on themselves. So, if you were to put a very efficient pendulum into a vacuum next to the right type of iron alloy, and perhaps somewhat regular resets would be required, but if the actual energy you are receiving is coming from the Earth, and you're not getting energy from nothing, but energy from gravity, could you not, in a sense, would it not prove true that you could get more energy out of a pendulum generating electricity while swinging than was put into it? to make it swing by the human, because though the pendulum will never have more energy that you can take from it that is not being put into it, the energy is being put into it, so to speak, by the Earth. So, maybe the way a pendulum swings in a vacuum is the most efficient way to generate electricity, without depending on things that change more, like the weather. Am I a scientist? No. Do I, did I take a physics class even? No. 
these are just ramblings. However, if it, I'm not like copywriting this or anything. If you want to go ahead and try and make it or like save the world by making a perpetual motion device and say I invented it or whatever, I don't care. It's, you can claim you invented it, I don't care. But, uh, even if, or put it, think about, like, if you were just trying to power a house and you just wanted an at-home generator, like, what if you just had a pendulum that you manually reset and had to keep manually resetting? It still might be a lot more efficient for generating home electricity than turning a hand crank or riding a bike or something. I don't know. So, basically what I'm trying to brainstorm is just, like, what is the, uh, if this isn't the answer, what's the closest thing to a perpetual, like, Rube Goldberg machine that we can build, right? Like... Most people, if they want to generate electricity at home through motion, use bikes or whatever, solar panels. And the initial iteration of my idea involved this, and I'm not totally scrapping it yet, basically creating an environment due to the inherent magnetic properties of certain alloys that had the alloys in motion for as long as possible due to the intrinsic properties of the materials in this environment. So, magnetism and pendulums are two things that I'm thinking of to use as acting force principles on an object or let's say you just, like my revolving door example if you had a super powerful magnet on it and just hit it and caused it uh, with hit it with a super powerful magnet and just sent it flying but you used a rather than an electromagnet, a magnet that is intrinsically strong enough to do that. So, if anyone has any thoughts, or if there are any smart science people who can tell me if I'm on the right track or where my thing falls apart, that would be appreciated. Let's just finish watering this. a couple of those orchid branch offs so we're gonna water those extra well
but that's pretty much all I have on that I um, feel free to tune out now or if you like watching the gardening feel free to stay I really am excited to see what comes of those uh, orchid root branch offs like that we have in there. how much our ice plant has grown since the first episode that we planted that.
that'll do it. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in whatever I make next.